better time than right now. For you to turn. For you to turn back now. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So please turn. So as I mentioned before, uh, what we're talking about today, I, I said first off, you know, just Merry Christmas uh, to everybody, prayerfully yeah. everybody had a great uh, Christmas and and, um, and and that it was a day just to celebrate uh, the pre presentation of Jesus Christ into this world on our behalf, yes, the gift that he was given uh, through him being birthed. Uh, mm -hmm. Through the, the Virgin Mary, he was given to us as a savior, as our righteousness, as our every need. And so we celebrate um, during the Christmas time as a, as a uh, custom, uh, just to, to celebrate uh, uh, that gift that he is to us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I mentioned today is that we're just, we're going to talk about that a little bit today, just a little bit, exactly um, uh, uh, Jesus Christ being presented to us and, and what that means and, and how that connects. And so again, the title as you see, this is Godliness Part 11, and we're talking about the mystery of godliness. And the, the, the thought is, okay, you just said you're talking about Christmas, how are you going from that to godliness? Well, well watch this scripture right here, what it says here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Look what he says. Great is the mystery of godliness. Then he explains that mystery. He says, God was manifested in the flesh, mm -hmm. justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Mm -hmm. Who do you think he's talking about right here? Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And But he said that this is that entire complete thing happening. It's the mystery of godliness. The mystery, the word mystery isn't like what we uh, have seen in the world. They say mystery. Mystery is something that was uncovered, unseen, unknown prior to, but now is known. That's what a mystery is. And he says, this is the, the unknown mystery of godliness, that God was manifest in the flesh in Jesus Christ. That's what he was. It was God literally manifesting himself in a physical body. He says he was justified in or by the spirit, meaning as he walked in this earth, he did the miracles, he displayed righteousness. All of that was the spirit of God working in and through him. And he says he was de justified or declared before the people as God. Mm -hmm. Declared before the people as being sent by God, mm -hmm. by the spirit of God. He was seen by angels. He was preached among the Gentiles as we preach the gospel. He was believed on in the world and he was received up in glory. And the first part I want to talk about, uh, or what I want to talk about mostly today is the first two things that he mentioned within the mystery of godliness. And that was that God was manifested in the flesh and that he was justified in or by the spirit of God. That's the two things I want to talk about. And so we want to go back to the initial aspect of when God was manifested in the flesh. Who are we talking about here again? Jesus. Jesus. So let's go back to see when uh, God was manifested in the flesh. Let's look at Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 29. Just so you know, I'm not going to hold you very long. I know we're still around the holiday time, so I'm, this isn't going to be a real long one. We, it's, uh, I'm not going to hold at all, but we're going to just look at this real quick. Now look at what he says over here in Luke chapter 26 through 29. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 through 29. He says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. He says, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Let's keep on going. Verse 30 says, Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. 
And look at what he says to her. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And then he says, and the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One is to be born, uh, is to be born will be called the Son of God. Oh, my. And then let's keep on reading a little bit more. Uh, and I skipped, I'm sorry, I skipped from uh, 31 to 34 and 35. And then look at what he says here in verse 36 through 38. It says, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. And then he says, and then catch this, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from that day. And so in these grouping of scriptures, it starts off to show how God was manifested in the flesh. Let's go back and, and look at that again, where, where he said uh, in verse 30, Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So the first thing that I, I want us to look at, because what I want to compare is, I want to compare how God was manifest through the, in the flesh through a seed being given to that woman and that seed being given birth to that it's the same thing with us. God will manifest himself through us in the same way that seed being given, that seed developed and that seed given birth to in and through us in the same way. And so again, it says, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And in the same way that, and, and, and look at what she says. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And I want to pause right there again. And because what are we doing? I'm comparing it to us. Isn't that what we are saying? How in the world can God manifest himself through us? In the same way she said, I'm a virgin. We're saying we are a virgin to godliness. We're a virgin to the manifestation of God in and through us. We're virgins to that. And so the, the thing that we will usually ask ourselves is how in the world is that going to happen? How can that be? And, all that. and so it's, that's usually the first place that we are when we start to hear that God is saying, I want to live in and through you. I want to manifest. That's, that's like, God, how can that be? I have lived my entire life saying, I'm going to try to get it together. I'm going right. to fix this. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to be good at this. I'm going to give this up. And God is saying, no, I want you to stop all that and allow me to work in it through you. The first thing we say is, how that, how that work? Right? Yeah, how does that work? Right? <laughs> like, how does, how does that happen? And, and he, it shows a small pattern here, though, first. And so look at what it goes on to say. It's Because, again, the pattern that it shows here for what happened with Mary that brought forth Jesus, that same pattern, it shows us with us as well. Now, now look at what he said. The first thing he did was he made the promise to her of what he was going to do. He made the promise to her. He said, then the angel said to her, do not be for afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You have found grace with God. That's what that word favor is. It's the same Greek word as grace. You have found grace. Grace is what you have uh, with God now. And behold, as a result of that grace, you're going to conceive in your womb and bring forth the son. And it's the same thing with us. We have found grace in the sight of God through Jesus Christ. And he says, through that grace, stuff, through that grace, Christ is going to manifest through us. We're going to, we're going to show that more uh, as we go along, but I'm showing the pattern here. And then, then he says, and, and shall call his name Jesus. So who's going to be manifest through, through Mary? Christ. Christ. So who's going to be manifest through us? Christ. Christ. All right, let's keep going. And he says, 
Then she said again, how can this be since I do not know a man? We say the same thing. How can this be since I ain't never seen nothing like that before? Right. I ain't never seen a manifestation of God working in and through me. And then, and then this is what the answer is. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit, oh Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power huh, of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And so again, it shows here what happened with her. The Holy Spirit came upon her and then the power of God, the power of the highest overshadowed her, engulfed her. And then it says what? Uh, Therefore also the Holy One who is uh, to be born will be called the Son of God. Now why did he say the Son of God? If a son is born, isn't that, doesn't that mean, if a child is born, if a child is born, doesn't that mean that that was a byproduct of intimacy or seed was given? Mm -hmm. And that's what he's saying there when he's talking about the overshadowing of you and the power of the, the, the from highest Shall, shall overshadow you and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That is that representation of that intimacy with the Lord where there has been this what are you they playing with Michael. Oh Michael, oh my oh we go oh, oh. <laughs> kids just oh, I, I know they do. Yeah I know. <laughs> I ain't no thing. And so and so again I'm gonna show we're gonna show this a little bit more as we go along. But I want us to see this pattern just a little bit. We're going to come back to it too. And, but I want us to, to see here that the answer that the angel gave to her when she asked, how in the world am I going to conceive and bring forth Jesus? She, he said, how that's going to happen is that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest it's going to overshadow you. And so we're going to keep going with that. And then look at look at what um, it was said right after that. In verse 36. And look what he said. Now indeed Elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. Now watch this. For with God nothing is possible. And so the, 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 the thing that he's trying to get her to see. That I know that you don't understand how it's going to work. But with God, nothing is possible. And he's saying the same thing with us. I know you don't know how I'm going to manifest myself in and through you. But with me, nothing is impossible. Understand that. Understand that. And then look at what she said immediately after that. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. And, and the angel departed from her. And so I want y'all to see what the angel said to her when he said, understand Mary, that nothing is impossible. And then Mary, he still didn't fully explain it all. All he said was, understand that your, your um, cousin, Elizabeth, in her old age conceived and is in the sixth month. He said, so understand that with God, nothing is impossible. And then all she said as a result of that was, let it be according to your word. Mm -hmm. And God is saying with us, you're not going to understand everything in the beginning, but just have the posture that says, Lord, your maid servant, your man servant is here. Let it be according to your word. You do it. I don't fully understand that. And that's all she did because she had to have uh, uh, she had a role in this. God wouldn't have forced her to do this. She had, but her only role was to say what? Let it be according to your word. So what does that mean for us? It's the same thing. God is saying all we have to do is say, Lord, let it be according to your word. Let it be, if you're saying God, I don't fully understand it yet. I don't know how you're going to do it. But all I'm saying is that your word says that Christ is going to live in it through me. He's going to manifest himself in me. Let it be, Lord, according to your word. Amen? Amen. So let, let, let's keep going now and see this. Because again, when we're talking about 
the mystery of godliness. This is God, Christ coming forth and living on this earth was God manifest in the flesh. LJ, Jasmine, y'all go back in there. That was God manifest in the flesh. And again, so the same thing now with Christ living in us will be God manifest in the flesh. And that's why it goes on in, in a different uh, scripture where it's kind of just talking about the same story. It says in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. And look what, look what it says. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So again, Christ operating in this earth, uh, living, was literally God amongst the people. That's, that's again, the comparison with, with Mary. So again, when we're talking about Christ living in us, that's God himself manifesting mm -hmm. himself in and through us. And so let's, let's look at a couple things real quick. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse uh, 27 through 29. Look at what it says. To them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of the mystery amongst the Gentiles. He says, this is that mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. He says, him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect or mature in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor striving according to his working, which he worked in me mightily. And so what I want us to show us here is look at what he says, the mystery that God willed to make known uh, uh, what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is again, Christ in you. He's saying that's the mystery. He says he calls it the hope of glory, the hope, the word glory. And I, I defined it last time. Uh, this way, when I talked about it, if a mouse came in here, ran around, and all of a sudden it came running, and, and Michael jumped up and, and jumped on top of the sofa, <laughs> and, and Michelle got when it got the broom started knocking the the, the uh, uh, mice out, and on Monday I would have called a, a exterminator. All of that would have been that mouse's glory, meaning what? It would have been the outcome of the manifested presence of that mouse. If that mouse had never been here, none of that would have ever happened. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. and, and so that means that's its glory. Well, when it talks about the hope of glory, it's the talking about the manifestation of God. Mm -hmm. The outcome of the manifestation of God. And he says that is Christ living in, through, in and through you. That's the, he's saying Christ living in and through you is what you earnestly expect to see as a result of God's glory mm -hmm. working in your life. And so again, he says that, that, that this is what Paul says, we go out preaching every man and even warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. This is the purpose so that I can present people mature in Christ Jesus. So that people, I go, he, Paul said, I go around, preaching this and I go warning this. I warn, I warn people of instead of allowing Christ to live in and through them, they want to just do them and try to live in their own willpower. He says, I warn them of that, that this is what God has made available for Christ to live in and through you. And so again, uh, um, he shows that, that this Christ living in you is the hope of the glory of God. That's the hope. That's what we earnestly can expect to see as a manifestation of God uh, um, in us. Now, and look at this scripture over here where it talks about, again, this, this uh, same thing, but from a different aspect. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, look at what he says. This is Paul speaking. For I, through the law, died to the law. He says that I might live to God. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. He says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life, now look at that, that's, that's important. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so Paul here again is showing that what we do 
is we allow Christ to live in us. But how do we do that? First thing what? We have to be crucified with him. Mm-hmm. Meaning what? I'm dead. Damn, damn. I'm not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, and this is what that means. I'm not trying to do anything in and of myself. I'm not. Just like with Mary. Did Mary say, I have to. She was already like, I, I can't do that. Like, I, I'm a virgin. I, I can't give birth to a. I've never known a man. How can I give? So that means that nothing that she could conjure up, she, she was showing, could bring forth what God was promising he was going to do. And so it's it's us saying the same thing. It's saying, God, nothing that I can do can bring forth what it is you want to do in it through me. No amount of willpower, no amount of striving, no amount of trying to be better and do better and get it together. That's what Paul means when he says, I am crucified with Christ. And look what he says, how he got him, how he got to that point. He says, for I, through the law, died to the law. He said, in other words, he says, look, all of my reading, thou shalt not, and thou shalt not, and failing, and feeling guilt-ridden, and then trying again, and then failing again, and then feeling guilt-ridden, and then trying to, he said, me going through that entire cycle is what brought me to the place of saying, it ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's how I got to the place of, I died to the law, because I realized that that method wasn't working. That method of me trying to say, I'm going to get it together. I'm going to be better. I'm going to figure it out. He says, that was how I got to the place of being crucified with Christ. Where now I've tried to do it on my own. I tried to get it together. I tried to fix it and I couldn't. And then I heard God saying, but I'm going to do it in you. That brought Paul and also want God wants to bring all of us to the place where we say, I'm, not, I'm, I'm crucified. I'm not trying to do this thing in and of myself. I'm not trying to fix it. And then look, he goes on to say, I'm crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, which is what it means to be crucified with Christ. He says, but now it is Christ living in me. And look at how he said, Christ is going to live in me. He says, and the life which I now live in the flesh, that's Christ living in me. Right. He says, how, how do I live it? I live it by faith. faith. Ain't that the same thing Mary said? Mm -hmm. According to your word. I believe what you say. I believe what you say you're going to do. And for us, what we say when it talks about faith in the Son of God, it's us saying, I believe in what this gospel message tells me Jesus has provided. I trust in that. I live my life on the basis of that. I trust in what in God saying that he sent his son to die and pay for my sins. See, the person who knows and walks around knowing that they their sins have been fully taken care of, are they going to try to do anything to fix their sins so they can try to fix their relationship with God? If they know their relationship with God is already fixed by Jesus. Mm-hmm. Y'all get that? Mm-hmm. If, if I know that, that, that Jesus Christ paid the penalty for my sins, then I will understand that there's nothing I can do to try to pay for the penalty of my sins. And the person who's not trying to do things to pay for the penalty of their sins, what are they? Crucified. Then I, see, see, that's how Paul is saying we get to that place of being crucified. When I realize that, that what Jesus Christ has done has paid the penalty, has done everything that he's, uh, that was necessary to bring me in right standing with God, I will then stop trying to do things in order to be in right relationship with God. And that's, that's what Jesus Christ did through his death. But also, it says that Jesus was raised from the dead. And he was raised from the dead to be my everything. To, to live now in it through me as I am a part of his body. And, it, and if I realize that nothing that I can do will God accept in and of myself. And nothing that I do in and of myself does God want. He only wants what his son has done and what his son can do in and through me. What am I going to do? I'm going to look exclusively to him. 
Trust totally in him. And he says that when I have those two postures, that posture that says that Jesus Christ finished the work, paid for my sins, so I don't have to try to do anything in and of myself, I'll be crucified. As I look totally to him to be the, my everything, to, to manifest himself in and through me, as I look to him, he says that that's when now you'll see me manifest myself through you. Mm -hmm. That's that seed that Mary took into her heart that promise of what God said she took into her heart and that allowed her to have the Holy Spirit engulf her mm -hmm. and bring forth Jesus it's the same thing for us and I hope mm -hmm. that y'all see that, that as we accept the promise of what Jesus Christ has done and provided for us it shows us that the Holy Spirit will engulf us mm -hmm. and he will bring forth Christ he will cause Christ to live in and through us and all we do is exactly what uh, Mary did she trusted in what God had provided we trust in what God has provided in his son she trusted in what God had provided in the promise of his son coming forth mm -hmm. and so again it says here that how Christ lives in me is as I live by simple faith and what the gospel tells me Jesus has made available and that, what, that's what keeps me out of my willpower. That's what keeps me out of my self-effort. That's what keeps me out of my trying to do better. That's what keeps me out of uh, 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 just living unto myself. Because I live unto the one now. That's why he says, look, for I through the law, died to the law, that I might now live unto God. Mm -hmm. Live to God. So I don't, I don't live by all this. I don't, I'm not free from the law, so I can just say, hey, I'm free from the law. You can't say nothing to me about what I'm doing no more. You know, some folks try to do that now. Right. I'm right. free from the law, so you can't say nothing to me. No, he said, the reason you're free from the law is so that now you can become a slave to where now Christ lives in and through mm -hmm. you. As you look exclusively to Jesus. And so, again, he, he shows us that that happens as we live by faith in the Son of God. And what I'm doing, y'all, because remember, this is godliness part 11. Mm -hmm. So I, I've shown all the different aspects that lead to godliness. So if, if y'all need any of the CDs prior to, let me know, because they'll explain step by step of how we get to that place. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm just kind of doing a little bit of an overview. So if, if y'all have any questions, definitely ask. Mm -hmm. And because uh, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of doing an overview of, uh, of what we've talked about so far, of how that godliness comes forth. But, but he shows us here, and, and what I'm mostly wanting to us, to us to have solidified with us today is exactly what happened with Mary. She didn't know how it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. right. She didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. All she said is, Lord, according to your word, let it be. And what I'm saying is that let's have the same perspective. I don't know how it's going to work, God, yet. I know you'll show it to me. But I, don't, I may not know how it worked fully. But according to your word, mm -hmm. you said you're going to do this in and through me, Lord. Do it. Yes. I yield myself to that. Mm -hmm. I present myself to you so that now Christ can manifest himself in and through me. Mm -hmm. So that he can do that. And that's, that's really what I'm trying to show in this. So again, like I said, I may not explain everything of how it gets to that godliness. If you got any questions, though, definitely ask. But again, if you want some of the previous teachings that show the step-by-step, -step, definitely get with me and I'll get that to you. And so again, he shows here that this is a result of living by faith in Jesus. And what did he say? And being dead to the law too. Meaning it, 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 it's not, okay, I'm, I, I'm, and when we talk about law, what is law? It's thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. That's what I live by, to try to live righteously. He said, no, I died to that. Right. I don't live by that anymore. He said, he said, I live. And he said, matter of fact, he says, I through the law died to it so that I could live to God. Meaning he said that, meaning what? You can't live to God through the law. Right. Right? right. right. You got to be dead to it. Right. And so he said, and he said, the, re the purpose for you being dead to it is so that you can now live now this life where God manifests himself through us. Right. That's what he wants. And he says, I can't do that through law. Because when it's law, it's you. It's you trying to get it together. It's you fixing it. And so he says here, well, how we live is not by law, but by faith. 
in the Son of God. And so look at this scripture over here as it goes on in the next chapter, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Look at what he says. He says, O oh, foolish Galatians. Now, let me just give you a little backstory. The backstory on the Galatians was what? I think, I think most of us know that. They what? They had these Judaizers, these individuals come in presenting law to them and saying, you Gentiles supposed to be living by the law like us Jews up in Jerusalem. Right. And so, yeah, you're saved by grace and all that, but you still need to live by the law. That's what happens. And so Paul was writing this letter to them, correcting them, telling them that those individuals that told you that, he, he said, let them be accursed. Mm -hmm. He said, they preaching another gospel mm -hmm. by telling you that. And they're hindering you uh, from actually walking in what God has provided for you in that. Because look at what he says here in Galatians chapter 3. Verses 1 through 3. He says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Look at what he says here. Now I want you to catch this. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Mm -hmm. He says, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Hmm. My, my, my. Now, my. Why, why is he saying that to them? Because they had received law. And he says, look, when I first came to you, did you, did you receive the spirit by doing the law? Did I come preaching law to you and saying, if you do this, the spirit of God's going to come upon you? Hmm. Or was it the hearing of faith? Meaning what? You heard the good news of what Jesus Christ said none and believed. Did the spirit overshadow you like that, like the spirit overshadowed Mary because she did some good thing? Or did the spirit overshadow her because she heard what God said and believed? And it's the same thing with us. That's what Paul is saying to them. You guys, when I came to you, all I did was preach Jesus. Told you what he provided. And what happened? The spirit of God did that work in your life. And he says that was the hearing of faith. You heard, believed, the spirit did the work. That was exactly how it worked. He says, but now are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, meaning what? You started off what? with simply hearing the good news of what Jesus had done. And the spirit was working. He says, are you... Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? And, and, and again, what is he saying? That's connected to law. He's saying when we live by law, that's us trying to perfect this flesh. Mm -hmm. God isn't perfecting this flesh. What is he doing? He's manifesting through it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope y'all mm -hmm. see the difference between yeah, that. Yeah. God is saying, I'm not trying to fix flesh. I'm not trying to make self better. I'm getting self out the way and just using you as a vessel mm -hmm. that I can work through. That's what he wants. And he's saying, and Paul is saying to these Corinthians, I mean these Galatians, that because now you have listened to those individuals who presented law to you, mm -hmm. instead of the good news of what Jesus Christ has done, you're now operating by the flesh. You're trying to perfect, mature, fixed flesh. And so my point, again, with this is, is simply to show it's about the hearing of faith. Hearing the good news of what Jesus Christ has done and provided and living by faith in him. That's all it is. And Paul says clearly here, the, 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 they received the spirit. And if we have read the next couple of scriptures, it talked about the spirit working miracles among them. He said, did he, he said, did the spirit do that because you did the works of the law? All these miracles and everything the spirit was doing? Or did the spirit do that because you simply heard what Jesus Christ had provided for you and began to live your life by faith in that? And hear me, y'all. It's a miracle that God is going to manifest himself in and through us. That's a miracle. Mm -hmm. We ain't never seen nothing like that. Go ahead, brother. Uh, uh, where you say that, like you say, as he came in the world, mm. so is he going to uh, 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 manifest himself through us. Yeah. Like you say, through Mary, 
Wow. Even though she was a Jew, yeah. obviously she was a simple woman. Yeah. She yeah. wasn't concerned with the law. Mm -mm. Because when the angel came and told her, man. she, she man. said, oh no, not according to man. the law. Man. Uh, if the whole uh, yeah. uh, uh, spirit of God does that, that's adultery. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know? yeah. But no, she just, by faith, my, my. she did it what she heard. That's and exactly right. And then even Joseph the same way. Oh, he sure did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. Amen. And, uh, and it took him a the second angel, too. They had to, yeah, the angel had to come talk to him. But yeah. the angel told him, and he just yeah, he said, you know, okay. took up and, yeah. and uh, took away. So absolutely, that the judgment of the Lord will be upon him. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 that is so true. Uh, that that is again. The, and I, what I, again I'm showing is just the method, y'all. I'm not showing all the steps to it. I actually I'm gonna show a little bit of that in a second, but I can't. I, we won't have time to explain it all. But again, the the method is simple faith. And Jesus, mm -hmm. that's it. I know it sounds so so simple, and so that's why it says that uh, Paul said to the Corinthians, "My fear for you is that someone leads you astray from the simplicity of Christ, because it's really simple as I'm trusting my life to Jesus Christ, and I trust in what He's provided, and God says the Holy Spirit, just like He did with Mary, is going to overshadow us." And as a result of that, I'm going to cause Christ to come forth mm -hmm. in and through us. That he's going to do that. Go ahead. And that just brings back to memory with me. I was thinking as she was reading, it just brought back a lot of memories. And I was thinking how Mary had such faith. Oh, my. Her faith was stronger mm -hmm. even than mm -hmm. her mother. Mm -hmm. And anybody around her other than her father finally came mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm to believing as she was believing. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's when the word comes to tell you that we have to, when we crucify ourselves and we die mm -hmm. to the commandments, mm -hmm. to the law, mm -hmm. those have to die mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. us and we just totally give in to the spirit that yeah. God lives in us. Yeah. And that's when he speaks a, that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Mm -hmm. And because if we have ears to hear what he's saying within us mm -hmm. and we live by what yeah. we hear mm -hmm. you can never go wrong my, because my, my. if you live by what you think my, my. the spirit came to me one day and I he was speaking to me and he told me don't worry about it if you live mm. if you think I said it mm. do it mm. and so I start living my life mm. by those words mm. that if I think God said it mm. I do it anyway mm. If he didn't say it, because if I thought he said it, because God ain't gonna tell me to do nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So therefore, right. if I did it, mm -hmm. it wasn't gonna be wrong anyway. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it yeah. might not have been what he told me to do at that mm -hmm. time, but mm -hmm. it still wasn't gonna be totally yeah. wrong. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right? Yeah. So I live, that's the way I live my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So I try to listen. I try yeah. to have ears to listen to what the Spirit is saying within yeah. me. Yeah, amen. And, and, <clears throat> and that's exactly, again, a perfect example of that's what. Uh, Mary did mm. and it was at the point of and that, that's why I love the beauty of that story because again it showed just the display of how we are to be when it comes to God saying that I will leave live live my life in and through you I manifest myself through you the first thing we supposed to say is how that's gonna happen mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the first thing we supposed to say and, and then but again and, and, and what she did was, how she was like, how that's supposed to happen since I know that that's not, I haven't done anything mm -hmm. in order to bring forth a child. Mm -hmm. And so what do we say? I, I have tried everything I have right, right. to bring forth good righteousness and I have seen the failure of it. Mm -hmm. I know I can't do it in and of myself, God. And God says, when I speak that to you of the gospel message and I tell you of what it is that I have provided for you and I've made available for you in my son, when I speak that to you, that's supposed to match up perfectly with a heart that knows that it can't do it in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key, the key mm -hmm. word that you've been saying is I. My, come on. That's the whole thing is yes. when we keep saying what I have done. My, my. I, 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 my, I my. Look, that's not what God is wanting Come us to now. look at, but he, he wants us to focus in yes. on Jesus and that's remove it. ourselves. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's right when now. We, when, when, I always go back to Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 
Mary was at the feet of Jesus yes, listening yes. to the word, whereas yes. Martha was busy All that work. in the kitchen mm-hmm. doing what mm-hmm. she thought mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. the right thing mm-hmm. to do yeah. to prepare mm-hmm. to receive Christ. Mm-hmm. And when, when Christ told her, Mary's doing what yes, she's supposed to do. Yes, that's exactly mm-hmm. right. And this is what we're supposed oh, to do. My, come we're on, supposed man. to take ourselves out of the equation that's right. and just focus on Christ. That's exactly right. I mean, it's so, it is just that simple. It is. It is just it that really, simple. It really but is. I believe we make it hard. Oh, yes, we, yes. And, and make it more algebraic than yes, it should yes, be. Yes, yes, But it's just as simple as two plus two. It, it really is. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and, 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 and that's the thing. I love how you said it. It is as simple as two plus two, but it's that simple to an individual who has never seen numbers before. Right. Yeah. Right. Who had never right. seen numbers before, but this right. is what God is saying: I will work that in through you. That's and that's the beauty of, of it. With with Mary, all he needed from her was a yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was it. Mm-hmm. That was it. I don't know how you're gonna mm-hmm. do it, but I'm your maid servant. Right. I'm your man servant. Mm-hmm. I'll allow you, Lord, do that great work in and through me. And God is saying. Have that. And that's what again Paul had went and presented to those Galatians. He went preaching Jesus. He went telling them about what Jesus Christ had provided for them, and saying that as you adhere and trust in what Christ has provided, He's going to manifest Himself in and through you. But what happened? Some other people came in presenting what something that was presented to like Martha that would had you little working over there. That said, you're supposed to be doing something. You ain't supposed to just be sitting there. And, and it's the same thing with with, uh, uh, with with us. Our constant attack is with views and perspectives that, again, try to lift back up self. That try to make it about self again. And he's saying here, again, have you, are you so foolish that you began in the spirit where you saw the working of the spirit of God in your heart and your life changing, but now you want to adhere to law again? And, and and instead of now Christ manifesting in and through you, it's you trying to be perfect by the flesh. You trying to perfect flesh. And look at what he goes on to say right here in Galatians chapter 4. This is the next chapter now. Because again, what is Paul going to these Galatians for? He's talking to them because they are um, adhering to law. They're adhering to law. And, and look at what he goes on to say in, in chapter 4. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again. Look what he says. Until Christ be formed in you. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have doubts about you. Tell me, you who desire to be under law, do you not hear the law? And again, what is he talking about in, in the whole context of that, that book? He's talking about individuals who began in the spirit, who began simply hearing the good news of what Jesus Christ has done and, and, and trusting in that and seeing the work of the spirit of God. But they all of a sudden started hearing to law. And look at what he says, what happened? He says, I am in labor, in birth pains, trying to get Christ mm-hmm. to be formed in you. Mm-hmm. And what is he talking about again? That's just like that seed now what developing on the inside. He, he, that, that seed, just like with Mary, what happened? After she got pregnant, that baby had to develop mm-hmm. on the inside. Mm-hmm. Well, again, yeah, it, it's with us. Yes, when we first get saved, that seed is planted. Right. But that seed has to be developed. Right. But he said that seed, Christ, isn't being formed, developed, because they were adhering to law. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't allowing Christ to be formed in them because they were listening to individuals present to them law again present to them saying you need to follow this you need to live by this you need to stop this you need to get this together you need to fix this and he's saying that this is what paul is saying when he's talking about i'm laboring in birth again that's what he was talking about with him consistently what spreading the seed Spreading the seed, consistently telling them, no, it's all about Jesus. And he, he says, it's like, I'm, I'm like in labor pains. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like I'm, tr- I'm, I'm trying my best to, to convince you guys that no, it's not about what these people are saying. Mm-hmm. Law, it's all about what he, my, uh, Jesus has done. 
what Jesus Christ has done. And he's saying that's like a, a constant fight mm -hmm. that Paul is having with mm -hmm. all of the ministries that he mm -hmm. started. That mm -hmm. there were constantly people coming in, bringing forth what the Bible says are destructive doctrines. Mm -hmm. And it, and the what they what how they hinder is they hinder from Christ being formed in people mm -hmm. from Christ because in order for remember we read back in Galatians chapter 2 that it is Christ who's going to live in and through him in and through us well first he got to be formed and as long as I'm as long as I'm allowing some other seeds law or any self-focused view to be planted in my heart I'm hindering that development I'm hindering that development as long as I'm giving ear and that's what, again, the Galatians were doing. They were giving ear to self-focused, self-glorifying, uh, self-gratifying views that Paul was saying, because you're adhering to it, you're hindering Christ from being formed in you. You're hindering mm -hmm. that. And, and until he is formed in you, he can't manifest himself in and through you. And so what we talked about is, and again, this is all, uh, this, some of this is still reviewed, so I'm, I'm not able to explain it all. But again, and I, I want you to remember this. Remember I said, uh, remember we read back over here. Matter of fact, let me show it to you. Remember we read back over here that, that the promise was what? In verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know the man? And this is what the, the angel said. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And so the Holy Spirit is the one who is causing the conception of in her womb and the bringing forth of Jesus. And so what am I saying that for? It's the same with us, right? The Holy Spirit is the one who's causing the conception and the bringing forth. Now, now why do I show that? Because going back over here, when it talks about here, the, but the fruit of the Spirit, it's talking about the Holy Spirit, is love, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law. What am I trying to show here? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, it's showing that these are all things that the Holy Spirit produces. That's what a fruit is. Mm -hmm. A fruit is a produce. It's something that is produced in us. And so, again, what did we just read? The Holy Spirit is there to do. To, uh, to bring forth and manifest Christ. And so what am I trying to show with this? That these... There's love, there's joy, there's peace, there's long-suffering. All of these are the character of who Christ is. Mm -hmm. All of these represent who Christ is, that the Holy Spirit is what? Bringing forth. I hope I'm making sense with this right here. Because again, what do we say? The Holy Spirit is going to be the one that what causes the conception to take place. And the Holy Spirit is going to be the one that what brings forth the manifestation of Christ. Mm -hmm. And and. So this, all of these, this love, this joy, this peace, this kindness, all of this is the manifestation of who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. By him forming these things in us, he is forming Christ in us. I hope that makes sense. Go ahead. Amen. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It seems, it, it, it seems like the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. such as mentioned there, mm -hmm. Is that basically versus the law? Yes, yes. You have that, then you don't have to worry about it. You, you don't. <laughs> you, you don't. You don't have to worry about trying to do something no. right on your own. Yeah. Because of Christ living in you, he's a righteousness. Oh, he is. He is, brother. And, and and that is that I mean, and that's the exact point that he's making. Uh -huh. That's why he says at the uh -huh. end of this, because remember, what's the whole context of Galatians? He's trying to convince these believers, stop following the law. Yes, right. yes. And they and the question they got to ask is, okay, if I'm not following the law and the law is telling me not to do this or not to do that, how am I not to do this stuff? Well he said, look, 
if the spirit, if you're living by faith in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. trusting in Him, what was the promise? The promise is that the Holy Spirit is going to manifest and do His great work in your life. He says these are the things that He's going to manifest, and if He manifests these things, ain't none of these things going to lead you in the direction that go against the Lord. Oh, I hope that makes sense. He's saying if I, if if I am, if the Holy Spirit, because you are simply living by faith in Christ. If you're simply trusting in what Christ is providing and the Holy Spirit is overshadowing you and he's doing that work of forming Christ in you in these characteristics, he's saying that which these characteristics are going to lead you to do, there won't be a single law in this. So you, that's why he's saying you don't have to live by the law. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to try to focus on, I got to try not to do this. If you have this this gentleness working in you, this faithfulness mm -hmm. working in you, this goodness working in you, that's mad, that's leading you. If that is what's happening, none of that stuff is gonna that's lead right. you, lead, lead you that's toward right. anything against the law. So he's saying you don't need law. And and look at what he goes on to say uh, uh, over here. I want to show this scripture right here in Second Corinthians. Remember, uh, just look at these scriptures here. Look what he says. For the love of Christ. Look what he says compels us Thank you. oh Jesus yeah. that same love yeah. we just read over here yes. that fruit of the spirit is love that same love he said is going to compel you look at what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1 he says now I Paul myself am pleading with you look what he says by the meekness and gentleness of Christ mm -hmm. who is present who in presence am lowly among you but being absent and am bold towards you and so he's saying what is causing me to plead with you Corinthians the way that I am it is the meekness and gentleness of Christ working in me. Mm -hmm. See, see it, right. us, That's you know, when we see folks cutting the food, we get bitter and angry. Mm -hmm. We're like, look, y'all better get this thing together, man. I ain't got time for all this. Right? right? right. 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 And, but he says now, he says, no, it's the meekness and gentleness of Christ that's working in me. Why is that, though? Faith in Christ. And, 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 and this is what I'm, I'm trying to show. These things, this meekness, that gentleness, that love, all of these things represent Christ living in and through us, y'all. That, that's God manifesting himself in and through us by the forming of these fruit and many other different things mm -hmm. that are similar to that. Now, go ahead, right. brother. Uh, but then at the same token, we got to be careful that we don't make the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit law. My mind. Yeah, yes, because a whole bunch of people do that too. That is an excellent example, brother. Yeah, one of the, uh, 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 you have somebody going through with somebody, mm -hmm. build, one of the characteristics of the uh, Holy Spirit is not to suffer. So I'm just oh, going to just gotta, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and you don't even have to mention it, it's just automatic. It's, uh, and, that, and that is the exact mm -hmm. aspect. When Mary, again, was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon her. That birthing development automatic. Yes. All yes. automatic. All, all she did. Was, um, and God is saying it's the same thing with us. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with us. As we simply live by faith in Jesus Christ, the manifestation of Christ developed in us and coming forth is automatic. Yes, that love, yes, that joy, yes, that yes. peace, that long suffering, mm -hmm. that kindness, that goodness, that faithfulness, that gentleness, that self control, all these things the Holy Spirit will form mm -hmm. in us. That's right. As we simply look totally and completely to Christ. And He's saying that that is, again, all these things are simply a result of uh, all these things are a reflection of Christ Himself living in us because because if you want ever wonder how in the world is jesus gonna live in and through me well he lives in and through me through the form of his gentleness yeah, his right. meekness That's his right. love That's his right. peace working in me his kindness working in me all of that is christ mm -hmm. living in and through me that's how that happens mm -hmm. and he says that the holy spirit is the one who produces these things in me but going back to here remember what what, what we said Back over here in Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. He says, this is all I only want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law 
or by the hearing of faith. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, and, and again, and I wish I had that scripture up. He says in verse three, are you so foolish? Have you having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? And what am I saying? I'm connecting that work of the spirit of God to the hearing of faith. Mm -hmm. Just like I'm connecting, trying to be made perfect by the flesh to law. Mm -hmm. Those two things connect. And so I'm saying that all that work of the spirit of God is done by simple faith mm -hmm. in Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Yes. He said, he said, I'm going to do it all in and through you. All you have to do is trust in what my son has provided and, and again, everything else that attempts to come your way that goes against that, cast it down. That's right. And as you do that, then you will see the work of my spirit in your heart and life manifesting Christ. But if we pick up law or anything like that, again, Paul is going to be like, I'm in bird pains trying to get Christ formed in you. <laughs> right? Because you continue to, to listen, listen to... Yeah, yeah, go by law, or, or just, or, or again, or just live unto yourself. You just live in life unto yourself. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, but, but again, what he's wanting to do is to make uh, the emphasis and focus of our lives Jesus Christ. And so we're about to get ready to get out of here. But this is, I want to show this real quick, where we talked about this right here in Second Peter chapter one, verse two and four. And look at what he says here. He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. And catch this in verse four, by which have been given to us, look what he says, exceedingly great and precious promises. Just like Mary was made a promise. Mm -hmm. A great and precious promise. Promises have been made to us. And he says that do that through these, these what? Through these what? Promises. Yes. Great and precious promises. And, and, oh, let me read it again. Okay. Verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these great and precious promises, mm -hmm. you may be a partaker of the divine nature. Mm -hmm. He says, mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through mm -hmm. lust. Mm -hmm. And so he's showing us again the system of what? It is simply these exceedingly great and precious promises of what Jesus Christ has made available for us. He says that as we do that, as we adhere to those, receive those, live by faith in those, he says we are automatically, that through these, you are a partaker of God's divine nature. Mm -hmm. See, God's nature of love. Mm -hmm. God's nature of peace. God's mm -hmm. nature of mm -hmm. kindness and joy. We partake of those by simple faith in what the promises of God have been made for us in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As we simply live by faith in that, God says, my divine nature is going to work in and through you. And that nature, again, is what? Christ. That's Christ. And again, the, the, I hope y'all see the connection with Eve. I'm mean, not Eve, Lord. With uh, uh, Mary, yeah. it was the same thing. She just received the great promise of God. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, God's divine nature in the form of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. was conceived in her mm -hmm. and given by birth to, mm -hmm. came forth. And it's the same thing with us. That as we receive the truth of what Christ has provided for us and made available for us in him, what the, the gospel tells us Jesus has done, as we allow those great and precious promises to be the reality that our hearts live by, he says, by doing that, you are partaking of his divine nature. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is going to be there to overshadow us and mm -hmm. manifest the very nature of Christ in and through us. Those fruit that we talked about, that 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 love, that meekness and gentleness of Christ. And as it says in 2 Thessalonians, now may the Lord, look what it says, direct your hearts mm -hmm. into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Mm -hmm. See, all these things 
are his. Yes. All of it are his. And the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to do that work of manifesting yes. them things in us. And so again, the reason why I connected to this to, again, Christmas is because what? All of this is a gift. Mm -hmm. Every last bit of it right. is a gift, a free gift to us that God has given to us that, all, that even though it's such a great gift, it's such an awesome gift that we can just be like, man, how in the world, God, is that going to happen? How is that going to take place? How is that going to come to pass? And God is saying, just like with Mary, just, just say in your heart, Lord, I'm your servant. I'm here. Let it be according to thy word. Let it be done by you. you. You're promising to do this in and through me. Let it be done, Lord. I, I, I know that, that as we walk along in this, you'll show me more and more. I know you will. But all I'm saying is, let it be done. Why? Because I try to do it on my own. And I know that don't work. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm just messing up. <laughs> Man, right? Really? Yes. I've yeah. tried to do it on my own. I've tried to fix it myself. So I'm not assuming that, oh, no, God, I don't really need you to do it. I can do it myself. No, I tried that and I realized <laughs> that I can't do it. So I'm just going to, but I also realize it's something that I need. I need him. I need his love. Mm -hmm. Operating with my children, operating in my marriage, operating in my singleness, operating with my family, mm -hmm. operating with my co-workers. Mm -hmm. I need his love. Mm -hmm. I need his patience. Mm -hmm. I need his kindness. Yes. I need that. And so, Lord, and I know I ain't got it myself. I, I know I don't have it myself. And so, Lord, let it be according to thy word. Mm. Amen? Amen. Lord, we just bless you. We honor you. We praise you, God. We just thank you for this time. We thank you for this time.